It's been heavily requested, more Styropyro crazy lasers. We're gonna look at this one right here, testing illegal blue lasers from eBay and making them even stronger. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer, a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response, I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check it out. I'm a big believer that eBay is one of the greatest things to come from the internet <laughs> age. I mean, there's always so much interesting and off-the-wall stuff for sale. And besides, where else am I going to get my Soviet military surplus or fusion laser optics? Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of old nuclear stuff. Like we use old electronics, old plasma screens, the orange ones from the 70s, and a lot of old relays that we get from basically the nuclear equivalent of eBay because a lot of this isn't manufactured anymore. So I get it. <laughs> eBay has a lot of rules against selling hazardous items, and these can be incredibly annoying for those of us who like to play with dangerous stuff. So that means if you're looking to buy things like cyanide or depleted uranium, you're going to have to go to other websites. In terms of laser... Technically, we make depleted uranium because we use it up in the reactor. Anything stronger than 5 milliwatts can do permanent damage to your eyes faster than you can blink. But it turns out they actually found a very easy way around these. All they have to do is say that their lasers are eye safe, then they can continue to pump out blinding lasers to kids all over the world. Oh, so Because what lying. could possibly go wrong Okay. With? I went on eBay and bought two blue laser kits for about 50 I'm sure there's no potential for lawsuit there. Well, I didn't break the law. The listings explicitly stated that the power output was under 5 milliwatts. I paid money for two low-power legal lasers and nothing else. And to top it off, I actually found U.S. sellers for these kits. So in the event that they turn on overpowered, it shifts the blame to them because it's not illegal for me to just own a high-powered laser. Okay, so you just you can't sell them. So you're buying things that they said were low-powered just so they can sell it. For the, okay, I see where we're going here. But yeah, that's true. It would make Styropyro blameless in this case. Here I've opened up the boxes to see what's inside. Now the lasers themselves are different styles, but the kits are essentially identical. They come with some lithium ion batteries, a charger, and some diffraction gratings. Now each set also comes with a pair of laser goggles, which is a good idea in theory, but you'd have to be a total idiot to trust these things. That looks so flimsy. Eyes. Now before I fire these up, I'm going to put on my own goggles from a legit source because it's possible they might barely be enough at 5 milliwatts or less, but considering, judging by the title of this video, these lasers are a lot more powerful than that. Ugh, that's... Giving people inadequate PPE is another grounds for people to just get hurt because they trust it. They say, hey, it's less than 5 milliwatts. Hey, I just need these little goggles. That's... that's horrible. I don't know about you guys, but I certainly value my eyeballs a lot more than whoever found the cheapest way to put together these kits. Yeah. All right, let's jam in some batteries and see just how eye safe these things let's really see. are. And here we go. Well, okay. they're fairly eye safe if they don't work. Why won't it work? So it turns out the switch on this thing is complete and utter mm. garbage. But this thing seems to work all right. And what can I say? Contrary to that what I said in the list, right. eye safe is not how I would describe this. Look at in that fact, smoke. it's probably so far over the safety limit that it's laughable. Dude. I definitely would not want to be hit in the eyes by this. No, not even a little eye safe. After a bit more percussive maintenance, I was able to get this laser working again. The, the dot, forget the actual beam getting shined in your face. Just looking at that dot could damage your eyes without adequate eye protection. These are the sort of lasers that if you were going to use a device like this at a nuclear power plant, it will require a certification in lasers. Certification that involves classroom training, taking a test, usually not a hard written test, but also a practical exercise supervised under instruction by a qualified person to evaluate your use with this, your use of PPE, when when handling the laser and just your ability to do it safely so this is sitting out there falsely advertised as saying it's low powered with ppe that's inadequate these people are setting themselves up for a lawsuit i mean obviously someone like styropyro who's had extensive experience tinkering with lasers would know to follow the appropriate safety precautions and to have the appropriate amount of respect for the tool that he's working with but this is the equivalent of giving power tools to kids. Actually, probably worse. 
because a lot of power tools, like such as a chop saw or a double action that you got to hold, you have to press two things at once. So, you know, a kid's not going to start the saw up by bumping it. But this thing, you're just pressing a little button. And as a kid, um, I enjoyed playing with just the little red laser pointers. So I would have prop most definitely injured myself with something like this if I got my hands on it as a kid. So this is uh, this is crazy that this is a product uh, sitting out there. But I wouldn't exactly count on it lasting a long time. So what can you do with these extremely dangerous lasers? Well, a lot of things. That is, Smoke if you like setting things on fire. By the look of it. When properly focused, this laser can burn and cut through several different materials due to the high power density it produces. It can light matches, just like that. It can ignite flash paper. It can cut through electrical tape. Mmm, smoked plastic. <laughs> Look at that, a clean now, cut. Now, it won't ignite my propane tank, Thankfully. but it can pop balloons with ease. <laughs> that was pretty fun. They can also burn your frickin' eyes out with ease. Oh, look at Jedi Master Styro Pyro here. <laughs> I know these work differently than how lightsabers are supposed to work, but this is just great. And with his super cool uh, laser goggles, looking like he's too cool for school here. <laughs> Nowadays, a lot of people get eye injuries from lasers that turned out way stronger yeah. than advertised. In fact, we should measure just how strong these lasers really are. Here I have this really nice Pronto Laser Power Meter by Gentech EO. Now it's going to tell me exactly how strong these lasers are. And here we go. So well over a watt there. Wow, what is that? 1.4, 1.5? So well over 200 times above the legal limit of 5 milliwatts. Talked about this more in depth to, in my reaction video to his pulse lasers, about how sometimes the watt numbers can be a bit misleading. Well, here you're concentrating a lot of energy to a very small area. So here we got a watt and a half concentrated to a point that small. Yeah, it can absolutely set things on fire, completely ruin your eyeballs if you're anywhere near it. But it's just because it's so concentrated, not like a bulb that uses 40 watts, but it illuminates the whole room. I'll pin a comment into the more in-depth uh, watt discussion in Styro Pyro's other video down below. 0.5 watts, actually. Yeah, so it's literally hundreds of times stronger than advertised. Yep. Let's check out this other one here. And... So they're about the same, so they're very, very powerful. Now, if these things were in a lab, they'd have to be bolted to a table in a locked room, and you'd need hours of laser safety training before oh, even yeah. coming near them. Oh, yeah. So these things are definitely not toys. And they're just sitting there on eBay! The kits also come with a set of diffraction gratings that are commonly called star caps by the sellers. Now they mount on top of the laser and split up the beam to many different patterns. I know I have to admit, That's cool. the effects are downright beautiful on camera, but having several laser beams shooting all over the place isn't exactly safe. That looks like those little stargazing type lamps that you see like in your kid's bedroom that your kid's into like astronomy or something like that you see those things up there would not recommend doing that with something like this because you're basically just scattering a laser that can blind people some of the individual beamlets can still be strong enough to cause eye damage even if they're just a fraction of the initial power of the beam just one third of one percent of the output is all it takes to damage your eyes faster than you can blink well like you said, it's hundreds of times above the uh, limit, so dividing that by a few hundred times is just going to get you around the limit, so <laughs> that makes sense to me. I obviously have nothing against owning a high-power laser. In fact, I think lasers are a great hobby, but selling something like this as I safe is appalling. Yes. Now, you may think it's obvious to be careful with something like this, but some sellers say that you can use this for presentations or playing with your cats. No. Presentations, no. Playing with your cat, you're gonna set the poor cat on fire. And children amusement, no. The kids will not be amused when they go blind. It's crazy. Who's this? Across the sky, allowing you to find the stars in the fan days. You want the stars is the leader in the vast sky. That looks like an example of an anomaly from running something through Google Translate. Portable size and science shape design. It's in the shape of science, of course. That's obviously a terrible idea, as even just looking Cat at the spot on the wall without goggles Cat. can do permanent eye damage. 
You make just one mistake with That's one horrific. of these, and it's lights out forever. Now I know what you're thinking. Is it possible to make these even stronger? Sure. Well, the answer is obviously yes, although it isn't exactly easy and you definitely shouldn't do it. Here I've laid out my tools to start surgery on the laser. I'm not even going to bother with static protection. Different type of laser surgery. The most power limiting component in this device is definitely the laser diode. Now I could just try driving it way harder, but really this wouldn't give me that much of a power boost. It would probably just fry the laser diode. So I decided to replace the stock laser diode with this much stronger one. I've mounted the new laser diode by press fitting in a copper heatsink and attaching some leads. Now I'm not exactly sure how the switch is going to hold up to the higher current demands. But I'm just going to cross my fingers and hope it doesn't explode. <laughs> now if I wasn't a lazy piece of garbage, I would have just used a MOSFET to handle the power switching here. Now I guess the last thing to do is swap out the batteries, as these cheap stock lithium ions will not cut the current demands of the new setup. Alright, let's see if this thing even works. But first I'm going to fire up this one for reference. Okay, so it's still strong. Now how about this one? Oh wow, Whoa. that's way stronger. In fact, can you hear that? Little pieces of the desk are exploding off when the laser hits. Yeah, it's subtle. Wow, there's actually a little fireball shooting off the surface. It's probably easier for me to see through the goggles than on camera, but wow, that's ridiculous. That's so scary. I want you guys to be able to see this fireball effect, so I'm going to put some goggles over the camera. That way you guys have a better view of what's going on. All right, here we go. Oh, wow, that's ridiculous. That's crazy. That is some serious power. It just forms a plasma on the surface like nothing. I like how through the goggles you can't even see the beam. It's just fireball from nowhere. That is spooky. It's amazing that a laser of this power can be built into a handheld device. That's so cool. Now, I feel like the camera just Let's isn't see. doing a great job at showing how much stronger this thing is now. So I'm going to put on the laser power meter. Four, right, five. So it's, uh, okay, so five it's over watts. five watts, about five and a half watts. So it's actually several times stronger than what it was originally. Over a thousand times. You know, it's funny now. because well, I guess now the only tests that are left are to uh, see what I can burn and destroy. So here's a CD case. <laughs> oh wow, that's so it's like fast. nothing. My nothing. Goodness. It cuts right through it like butter. Let's see how fast it'll cut holes through cardboard. Or <laughs> light it on fire. That works too. Or both, yeah. Let's try it against a plastic cup. Oh wow, keeps lighting a fire. You're gonna cut the cup off. <laughs> okay, this is awesome. That is powerful. And this is a handheld laser. Not mounted on anything in some kind of lab. Ah, look at that, it's amazing. All right, let's give tape another go. Wow, slices right through that. Did you know that you could use nuclear material to amplify the power of a laser to crazy levels? Specifically, you can pump the laser. And pumping a laser is when you transfer energy into the laser that massively increases its gain with an external source. In this case, it's going to be fission fragments and neutrons. There was this crazy project during the Cold War called Project Excalibur, which is a laser nuke. You have a nuclear weapon in space. You surround it with a bunch of X-ray lasers. You set off the nuke, and it shoots out really powerful lasers. And here in this cheesy drawing, hits incoming ICBMs. And this doesn't really do it justice because it would be more or less omnidirectional, or however many X-ray lasers you equip with this device. And you're in the upper atmosphere, so you have quite a wide field of view, so you could potentially hit ICBMs from thousands of kilometers away. This was back in the 1970s, and this never really... And this experiment had uh, ran into a whole bunch of technical and logistical issues. The biggest of which is, well, this sort of thing would only work in space and it would have the potential to hit a bunch of satellites. It was, it was this crazy idea, but it does show what lasers could do theoretically and the way the world was back then. To do that, you're going to need your lasers to be on the order of megawatts, by the way. A million times stronger than what you see in this video. Amazing. This one should be easy. Here's a candle. A candle. Light the candle. Yeah, piece of cake. With the laser. 
That's like the world's fanciest candle lighter. I like it. <laughs> I wonder what it'll do to this cat. That seems like the most styropyro thing ever. I'm gonna light a candle with a laser and turn it off just by smacking it with my palm. <laughs> you. Mmm. I love the smell of roasted nuts. <laughs> I caught on fire. That's so cool. Alright, I got one more dumb one. Let's see if it can give my arm a haircut. Dude. Oh, oh wow. I can feel it burning the hairs right off. set your arm on fire. The key to not getting third degree burns is by not letting it touch the skin. Okay. Oh wow, that's awesome. Such a high tech method of Gotta training. have a steady hand for that, man. Ouch. <laughs> Gosh, it's such a shame these things are so incredibly dangerous. Because they're really, really cool. That was fascinating, and <laughs> they did expose a potential flaw in what you could buy on eBay and what you can't. <laughs> I really appreciate the recommendation on this video. It's a lot of fun to uh, see someone play with lasers from a safe distance. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.